Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back if you're joining us live. Um, I am Sam. I'm with NATP, and I am joined today by Eric Green um, from Tax Rep Network. Eric, how are you today? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. I'm good. So close to the holidays. We're just kind of gearing down and wrapping up and then getting ready to get going again. So yep. it's, oh, it's, it's uh, We're getting very busy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um. So we are here today for our Ask Me Anything series, the last one of the year. It's been um, a real treat to just be able to pick your brain, Eric, and you're so knowledgeable in this area. So it's it's a real honor to be able to have you. Um, and I know for a lot of the viewers, too, and people who watch this later, um, you're just a, an abundance of information. So it's great to have you back. Um, this is a quick recap for everyone. Ask me anything. We're joined with Eric. Eric um, is a representation specialist extraordinaire um, with the IRS. Eric, do you want to talk a little bit? You're with Tax Rep Network, which is a NATP and TRN have a, a partnership. But do you want to talk a little bit about what you do? Yeah. So I, I'm a partner at Green and Scars. We're a boutique tax firm. And um, we have Tax Rep Network, which is a podcast and our coaching. And it's really where we are the NATP for tax rep people. So we're your help desk. We provide training. And um, we have a partnership with the NATP. So you get a special deal as an NATP member to join if you want to join Tax Rep and, and start building a representation practice. Perfect. Um, and so, like I said, Eric is with us today, taking some time out of his day, answering some questions that we've had come in. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so the first one from Francis, Eric, my client received a summons for his bank statements and the bank signature card from a revenue officer. Do you think this is a criminal investigation and do we need an attorney? Um Okay, so um, very quickly, no, I don't think it's a criminal investigation if it's with a revenue officer. It would be from uh, IRS criminal investigation, a special agent, if it was a criminal investigation. And given that they've summoned bank records and the signature card, um, what, what, what we're going to see is a huge ramping up, uh, starting January 3rd, uh, of these trust fund assessments, which are assessments against the owners of uh, employers that aren't paying the payroll taxes. And so given that they're summonsing bank statements and the signature card, that would indicate to me that they're looking to see who has signature authority and who actually signed the checks, leading me to believe that this, I, I'm betting that client has unpaid payroll taxes uh, or has not filed their payroll tax returns and now it's been assigned to a revenue officer to do the investigation and determine who's responsible. In in the big scheme of things, is this a situation that you see often? Is this kind of a niche situation? Um, yeah. What are your it, thoughts it, on that? It's a lot. I mean, we see a lot of it. Um, I believe payroll taxes is probably the number one reason why people end up in our office, um, followed by uh, sales tax. And, and you can see why, right? If business gets slow, that money, which is often commingled with all the other operating funds, uh, just ends up getting spent. And now it comes time the end of the quarter, the end of the month, they don't have it. Don't worry, next month will be better. And then next month will be better. And before you know it now, two, three, four months in, now the IRS comes knocking and the liability is so large, they're not going to be able to pay it. So um, we actually did a program on resolving payroll tax debts with the NATP. I'm not sure if it's still in the CPE library, um, but um, this is actually going, it's a hot area. It's going to be getting a lot hotter in 2022. Perfect. Um, second question for you from Gary. And actually, I should note too, anyone who's watching live, um, if you have questions, please feel free to chat them. Um, while we're doing this, Eric has agreed to take some questions live. So if you have anything that comes up or whatever, um, shoot them our way and we'll we'll address them after we get through our, our pre-submitted questions. So um, just another little caveat. But so second question that we have had, Gary, um, Eric, the IRS reviewed our offer and is claiming um, they will not allow the taxes we claimed because he has not been paying them. Uh, but in your training at TaxCon, which was a, a fun NATP event, um, you told us they did allow it. Can you explain? 
Okay, what I'll explain is that the marker specialist is an idiot. Um, and so, uh, and, and, and not, not to sit here and be flip. The, um, don't be impressed. You would think an offer specialist would be highly trained in offers. Um, they're actually not. So, so let me explain why they're wrong. Uh, first of all, just um, in the Internal Revenue Manual, I think it's 515.111 is the table of just other expenses and whether, they're, um, whether they'll be factored into an offer or not. The one for current taxes says that because the taxpayer has to maintain compliance during the offer and going forward, the offer specialist will allow the current taxes even if they don't have a history of paying them. Right. So first of all, the offer specialist is just wrong. It says in the Internal Revenue Manual, you can do that. And I think it's 515.111. I would go check that. Uh, and when you go to the table, just scroll down to get to current taxes and there'll be the explanation. Now, just logically, they have to be wrong. So think about it. we're looking at future income. That's what that's what the IRS is calculating. Reasonable collection potential is the future income. How can you have future income where you don't pay your taxes? You know, in other words, you'd have to maintain compliance. You'd have to pay your tax. So it would make no, no sense for them to increase your future income because they're not going to allow you to pay the taxes, which by, def which by default will cause you to default <laughs> your offer. So it just, it's, it's illogical uh, just on, on the surface. But the actual citation is in the Internal Revenue Manual in 515. Go to the other expenses. I think it's 111. And it's in there. They have to allow the they have to allow the current taxes, regardless of the history of paying. So then, without going into too many of your secret sauce um, situations, can you just give a little bit of insight on what the tax pro should do next? What I would do is I would respond in writing. I would fax to the offer spread, and you want it in writing because the phone, even though it's faster. What they're writing in their notes may not be matching the words coming out of my mouth. So what I would like to do is, for the record, because I can't delete that or ignore it, it's, it's permanently now in the record when it comes over as a fax to the government. I would say, um, we disagree with your disallowance of the current taxes. They are paying the current taxes. And according to the Internal Revenue Manual 515, again, go check this, 111, basically states that you have to allow the current taxes regardless of their history of paying them because they have to maintain compliance going forward. Okay. If you disagree, please respond in writing and, and cite what your source for that is. That should put an end to it. So the key there is get it in writing too. Get it in writing and get, and get it, get it on the record. And if you cite for them, they're going to have a hard time getting around that. Um, next question for you uh, from Tina. My client mixed, missed their tax court deadline and now has a threat to levy. What can we do about it? Um, so the notice of deficiency came out. Client sat on it, did not bother filing the, uh, not bother, but didn't file in U.S. tax court. Um, when they filed in U.S. tax court, that would have gotten it over to appeals or whatever. So now they're in collections. Um, assuming they have not been levied yet. I would file a doubt as to liability offer. In fact, we covered this, I think, in the last AMA as well. And the reason is, is the government's going after non-filers like they're going at, like, like it's going out of style. So um, what I would do, it's a form 656L, as in liability. Um, 656L, you submit an offer uh, for what you think the correct liability is. And if there isn't any liability, you, you think the taxpayer doesn't know anything, then you offer a dollar. You have to offer something. But it's not just the form. With that goes all of the backup that you would have presented to like appeals had you gone to tax court or, or, or IRS chief counsel. You submit all that with the doubt as to liability offer. So the, the complete package has to go in. And that one, it's an offer. So it'll stop collection and it'll force a review. And then they'll review the backup. And if they agree, can either accept the offer or more often than not, they'll call you and say, you know what, we've reviewed it, we agree. If you can withdraw your offer, fax is something withdrawing your offer, we'll just debate it. And you know, people get nervous. Well, should I withdraw? I've never had them lie to me. Oh, yeah, withdraw it, we'll abate it. And then, surprise, we're not going to. They've never done that. Um, but if you're that concerned, you can always fax over saying, 
it, it was wonderful talking to you. I'm glad you're going to abate this. Because you're abating it, we're going to withdraw the offer. If for some reason you change your mind and will not abate it, we, we please reinstate the offer. You can always you know, caveat it if you want, but I've never had them lie to me. You fax over the withdrawal, they'll just go through and abate it, um, and it'll go away. Wonderful. Um, and we did get a question in from Jeremy. J Eric, are you willing to take a little little caveat and, and sure. um, check this one out? Um, yeah, Jeremy, nonprofit had not filed returns since 2009. Nonprofit status revoked in 2012. Okay. New board members discovered this in 2020 and forced the accountant to file back returns. Accountant filed 14 through 20. 1120 subjecting the organization over 30,000 in liability is there any recourse at this point <sighs> um <laughs> it's a toughie it seems like you know what well, here's here's the thing you when it was revoked they could have sought to get it reinstated i've never seen anyone do that 11 years later so um So let's think about this. It's it, when they revoked it; it probably became a, a assuming it's a corporation. It was it's now a C corp. The C corp now has thirty thousand dollars of liability. Um, you know what? It's probably worth filing an abatement and requesting to have the um, non nonprofit reinstated. And and I'm not a nonprofit expert, but here's what I'm thinking. A big part of this will be showing what happened to the money, meaning the entity, without realizing it was revoked, continued fundraising and using that for charitable purposes. I think, therefore, there may be an argument to see if you can get it reinstated. I don't hold out a lot of hope um, because it was so long, but it's possible if you can go back and say, look, we've prepared the returns. Um, and, and, you know, everything was charitable, meaning for instance, if somebody privately had taken the money, it, it would blow up, even if they reinstated it, it'd be all over. So, I mean, at that point it's worthless here. Um, I might, I might try an abatement and now I, what's unclear to me is they filed back returns, which I assume were the 1120s they were, With the 1120s filed, I think it's probably too late. Uh, you can try, but I, I'm, I was thinking maybe let's go file the 990s and try playing dumb. And when they come back, see if you can get it reinstated that way, sort of. I'm, I'm thinking this is simply too late. I'm sorry. I wish I had a better answer. That's, thank you for the question, Jeremy. This is very helpful. I'm sure even if it's just, you know. It is what it is at this point. Um, again, if anyone has any questions as you're watching this, please feel free to write in. We've got the expert with us. So um, with that, we will continue to our pre-submitted questions. Um, from Dan, uh, oh, Jeremy said, "What well, um, was my thoughts as well. Thanks. <laughs> I love the Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dan's question is, um, I want to sign up for the NATP TRN deal. And if I do, can I get one of the T-shirts with you on it? Eric, tell us about this. There's a story here. So, um, I did a, I did some photos. They were supposed to be casual, and one of them is I'm in a black T-shirt, and I'm kind of like this. My staff thought it was very funny to take that picture, and they put it through some graphic uh, app. I don't, I, I don't, I don't uh, Prisma. So I have no idea what it's called. And it came out looking like the Terminator sort of picture. And then they put on it, IRS said what? And they posted it on Facebook. People thought it was like the greatest thing. So people begin calling the firm. This is why I don't use much. I don't do much on social media. People start calling the firm. Can they buy the shirt? <laughs> so my staff went out and printed, gave me one shirt. So it's the tax rep shirt. But on the back... Is the picture <laughs> very um, serious? Was, was this no? It wasn't Jeremy. Who was it? Who asked this? Um, Dan. Dan. Yes. Uh, Dan. Yes. If you go and you sign up, 
uh, for the special deal and for the NATP uh, uh, TRN, you know, deal, with, which is the four month discount. Uh, when you sign up, email us at it's hello at taxrepllc.com. Give me your shirt size and where you want it to send, where you want it sent, and I will have my staff pull one out and send it to you. Just tell us your shirt size and, and uh, you know, we have your address and everything when you sign up. And yeah, we'll, we'll send you a shirt. That is hilarious. <laughs> you know, or, or, by the way, I think they'll give you other stuff like books or mugs or whatever. If you take a picture of yourself wearing it and post it. Now, that's oh the new gosh. thing on Instagram. They're, they're oh doing my So my staff are, are having a whole lot of fun with this. That's not incentive enough. Um, it's weird to watch my partners walk by with my face on their back. I like bet. Yeah, absolutely. Excuse me. Oh, that's funny. Um, and just wanted to touch back on that too. Um, NATP and TRN do have a partnership. So um, NATP members can take advantage of that and, and sign up. Um, Eric, you mentioned four months, four months. Um, it, it, is a, it is a discounted price for four months. The, the thought is it gives someone four months, they get the books. They can start the training, start their marketing. Um, you know, it kind of lets them ramp up. And this time of year, I mean, I hope people are like, well, it's almost tax season. You're going to have all your clients in your office. And, and to let people know, hey, we if you have tax problems, we can solve them. You'd be amazed how many people know other people in trouble. Um, my, my first tax rep member, uh, his name, he's retired now, Anthony DeLucia. When he, I made him, he's a friend of mine, sit through the original training that I put together, which I ultimately licensed to CCH. Now it's at UConn. Um, he actually went back, and it, it was the year end. It was it was right before New Year's. At, at the holidays, when he sent his organizer out to his um, tax prep um, clients, he's put in a one-page newsletter what to do if you can't pay the taxes. He got one hundred and forty-eight thousand dollars of new business by the end of his first year, um, and so ultimately, four years later, sold his ten forty practice, and now just does consulting, and he's got some rental properties and stuff. I, I see him once every other week. We're still friends, and uh, yeah, because he said he sent it out. What he got a lot of was, I didn't know you did this. My son has a problem. My 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 wife just told me she hasn't filed in five years. Um, I haven't paid the sales tax. Can you help me with that? And he said it was literally that was literally marketing he did, and, and he added it to his 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 web page. Mm -hmm. No commercials, no blogging. I mean, I, I'm into blogging. I love that. But he literally just getting the word out that he did this. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, it's a great time of year to do that. And um, that was a deal that we negotiated with NATP to give them the special, you know, the four months, which we've never offered anyone else. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about this before too, you and I, but. Um, and you've mentioned this this session as well, but it's going to be an even more prevalent um, issue, especially this year. And as COVID continues, with um, people not being able to pay and and all of the other things going on. Um, well, well, we're we're going to see a lot more like that summons with the payroll mm -hmm. starting in the new year. Um, in fact, I think that was one of the questions that came in. Uh, was the, someone asked about January? In fact, you know what? Um, Am I correct? Is there a January 3rd question there? You mentioned it before. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. Actually, the next question. Yeah. yeah. So this is a good segue. Um, in the webinar yesterday that you did, Eric, um, trust fund assessments will start again January 3rd. Has the IRS actually announced that? Yeah. So what we're what, what we're talking about is um, so. So I did a webinar yesterday, like a lunch and learn. For, uh, we had we had like 400 NATP folks on. Um, I mentioned, I did a talk with Darren Gio. Now, if you don't know who Darren is, Darren is the S, uh, IRS SBSC, Small Business Self-Employed Commissioner for Enforcement. Darren and I did a talk for the Washington State Tax Symposium. And I kind of threw out this, this is, you know, come, Darren, you can tell me, when are you guys going to start in on the payroll enforcement? Because they've been holding off. And he was, oh yeah, January 3rd. I was like, excuse me? He said, yeah, yeah, January 3rd. He said, January 3rd, there are going to be a lot of people that are going to have a very rude awakening uh, to start the year. Um, they could have technically started in 2021. The commissioner wanted them to hold off. Fine. But starting 2022, literally the morning of January 3rd, employers that they have flagged in the system who have not been depositing, um, trust fund assessments are going to be going out. Um, revenue officers are going to start pursuing them. It's going to pick up 
uh, we're going to see the pace of enforcement against employers pick up quite a bit. So 2022, um, what I'm telling my tax rep members right now, start marketing for payroll taxes. You know, the blog or the email, like, listen, if you're behind in payroll tax, and by the way, always throw in the sales tax. Because if they're behind in payroll tax, chances are they're behind in the state sales tax. You know, come in and let's get ahead of this problem before the revenue officer shows up and knocks on your door. Right. So, yeah, I think payroll tax problems are going to be much uh, enforcement is going to be much more prevalent. Um, and for us, it, it's an opportunity because those cases, Sam, tend to be much more lucrative. Because if you think about it, I have to get the business into compliance or I have to wind it down if it, if it can't make it. Then we have the trust fund assessment, which is the personal liability for the unpaid payroll tax against the own individual owners, and we have their collection case. So in 2018, we did a survey of our members, and we actually did a webinar this summer on the survey results uh, to revisit that. The um, survey, basically the average fees for a payroll tax case were $15,800. Because if you think about it, you had to deal with the company, either winding it down or getting it into compliance, working out a deal, and then you had to work on the owner. And by the way, the state is also usually involved. So when you start adding all that up, you're talking about something involved and the average fees reported by the tax rep members, 15,800. So when I talk about, you know, hey, can you add 100,000 to your bottom line? How many of those cases do you need? Six, yeah. right? I mean, it, it, it's it's going to be, a, it's it's an opportunity to help people. It's an opportunity, to, I mean, you're helping the government too when you work these things out and it's a real business opportunity. There's a lot of money to be made helping people solve the problem that they've created for themselves. Um, we have a question, Eliana. We do. Yes. Very good. Do you, do you have training any? for newer EAs? Um, so the answer, Eliana, is yes. When when you go into tax rep it, it, inside, um, there's 150 hours of on-demand training. Everything from audit appeals, um, collections, offers, installment agreements, to the point where it started to become overwhelming to new members, like, oh my God, where do I start? So my members actually suggested, we have a forum, we, the members can talk to each other. Um, the big recommendation that came back was, can you create a roadmap? Where do you start? And we just, you know, we thought that was a really good idea. So when you go in now, there's a red button that says, start here. So when you go into that, we actually kind of, it's, it's me talking about what I would do first. Here are the workshops I would do first. Here's the marketing that I would start your market. You always start your marketing right away. And you might be thinking, well, I'm not really comfortable. Mm -mm. It takes a little while to ramp up. Uh, and so I believe you start your marketing right away. Um, you, we've got about six weeks till things get very busy. Um, I would go through the workshops. And as clients are coming in, when they learn that you do this, you're going to start laying the groundwork, one, getting referrals, two, they themselves um, will, um, you know, will be like, hey, you know, I don't think I'm going to be able to pay this year because we're, you know, we're just coming out of this mess that we were in. The other thing is they might say, again, like, like Delusha found out, you know, I didn't know you did this. Well, Elian, I didn't know you did this. My brother told me he, the, the IRS came down, he has a payroll tax problem or, you know, um, he's under audit or whatever. The other thing I want you to everyone to think about, um, and I just did a podcast. Um, we recorded last night with a friend of mine, Stevie Just, who's a retired Navy SEAL. And we talked about, you know, a lot of people start getting overwhelmed. How do you, because, and, and by the way, to be a special operator, they are experts in keeping what, what we refer to as keep your world small how they focus on a task, task centric, you know, and, and just knock things out and get things done. It really does apply to our, our, our practice. And so he and I recorded this podcast. And one of the things that came up is what should accountants be doing right now, right? It's right before the holidays. You train your clients, all right? We have all trained our clients to expect whatever. Um, I would make sure your clients realize if they come in after April 1st, they're getting extended and they're paying for the extension, all right? The clients have to get their shit together and get it in while you can work on it. It's not good for you and it's not good for them for you to be trying to do their return 
at 11 o'clock on April 13th. You're asking for mistakes to be made. It's no way to, to live your life. The other thing is, what I would do now is take the holiday weekend while the football games are on. There are lots of football this time of season. Go through your client list. The, the clients that are Ds and Fs, the ones that you hate working with, the ones that are just sucking your will to live, fire them. Get rid of them. You don't have to work with them. It, like For instance, this is my practice. I get to pick and choose who I want to work with. You don't get to just call and pick me. I don't have to take you as a client. And that's a hard thing, especially when you're starting out. I know Eliana is a new EA, but she may have been doing taxes for years. I don't know. But it's a hard thing when you're starting out because you, you just want the work. Um, lawyers have always told young, older lawyers have always told younger lawyers, you will make more money on the cases you don't take. And what they mean by that is be leery which client you take and which ones you don't. What I would be doing now is, A, get rid of any of the problem clients you just don't want. You don't need them. Life is too short. Um, De-stress, all right? Get rid of the people that just ratchet up your cortisol levels, all right? Um, as far as your other clients, um, everybody goes up. Fees go up every year, right? I'm willing to bet your rent goes up. I'm willing to bet your staff would like a raise. I bet your supplies are going to go up. Assuming you can even get them these days because Amazon Prime doesn't mean anything anymore um, because of the supply chain issues. You know, everything else goes up. Why shouldn't you? Mm -hmm. Right. So first of all, everybody, everybody goes up and inev inevitably somebody will come in and I'm waiting for it. The comment will be, well, Eric, I'm going to lose clients. Yeah. Good. All right. Bye. I'd rather make the same money doing less work. Right. You train your clients. So one, make sure you set your fees Two, I would have them pay when they drop their stuff off. I would not be billing in October. Why? You should be paid when you hit the submit button. All right. If they don't get their stuff in by March 31st, they're going on extension. They pay for the extension. All right. Um, and uh, so I think now is a good time. We're all very busy. Get your arms around your practice. All right. Um, and frankly, if you can free your time up, do more tax rep work and charge, you know, whatever you're charging an hour, add $100 an hour for the rep work. Uh, if you don't want to do tax rep, but you like financial planning, get your CFP. Add financial planning to your existing practice. If you love accounting, go get your CFE and, and do some forensic work. The forensic accounts we use in our criminal cases and bankruptcy cases are between six hundred and eight hundred dollars an hour. All right. So um, I'm. I think we all elevate our practice. Whatever that is, whatever your interest is, do it. Do I? So the reason I'm saying, should I be getting rid of my ten forty practice? Eh, I don't think I'd do that. But one thing I would do is make sure it's the 1040 practice you want. All right. Mm -hmm. Take control of your practice. You're going to have to, you may have to retrain some of your clients, mm -hmm. right? And it would be good to lose the ones you really don't want. I love that. That's really good advice. Eliana said, life's too short. It's true. And it, it really is. <laughs> As if if COVID has shown us anything else mm -hmm. is, you know, let's value the time that we have. And uh, maybe be a little nicer to each other as as a as a as a you know as part of that. That would be ideal, <laughs> absolutely. Well, thanks again so much, Eric, for joining us. Um, that is all of our questions, I believe, for now. Unless any come in as we're wrapping up. Um, it, again, as always, you are just a, a wealth of knowledge, and I really appreciate your time. And I know everyone watching has probably gained some valuable insight as well, even if it's just a pep talk to get. Get their gear together and get going. If you do, if you do join um, tax rep through the through the through the um, um, through the arrangement with NATP, um, shoot us an email. It's hello at tax rep LLC. Um, that goes right to Nicole, my assistant. Tell us your shirt size and where you want us to send it, and I'll send you. Yeah, know, you want to hold up one more time. Yeah. You can steer your clients. <laughs> No kidding. <laughs> Terminator, Eric. <laughs> kidding. Perfect. Well, thanks again, Eric, for joining us. Thanks, everyone, for watching. And um, we will be continuing this in the new year. So watch for um, the announcements and, and the events. And um, I will see you in the new year, Eric. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the, the year and the holiday season. Yes, everyone. Happy holidays, everyone. Stay safe. And uh, we'll see you in the new year. All right. Bye-bye.